So, good morning po, my dear students. For today's video, we're going to talk about the hypothesis testing on population proportion. So, actually, this hypothesis testing on population proportion is just but the same with our hypothesis process on population mean. However, ang pinagkaiba lang po ng dalawa is that the formula that we use in step number two. And also, unlike po in the population mean, we're in our basis for the central limit theorem is the number of samples. Dito po sa population proportion, we use the assumptions of the central limit theorem, which are number one po kailangan meron tayong binomial experiment and number two kailangan po NP and NQ must be greater than or equal to five. So to illustrate the process, Let's first have this example. So for example, people believe that 70% of the students found that the topic hypothesis testing is quite difficult. A student wants to test if this is true by conducting a survey to 500 students taking statistics and probability with hypothesis testing as their topic and found that 77% of them agrees. Run a hypothesis test at the level of significance of 0.05. Now, kung maalala natin, di ba, lahat ng hypothesis process adheres to this theorem, which we call the central limit theorem. At kanina nga po, na-mention na natin na sa population mean, ang basis natin ng central limit theorem is the number of samples. So, di ba po, kapag ang n is greater than or equal to 30, we use the z-test. But if it is less than 30, we use the t-test. With the population proportion, we have two assumptions. So yung first assumption po natin, must, it, has, or it must adhere to the binomial experiment. So kung maaalala natin, when we say by, ibig sabihin meron tayong dalawa. So kaya nga po, di ba, ang bicycle, for example, it has two wheels because it is bicycle. So dito naman po, meron tayong binomial experiment. Ibig sabihin po kung sa loob ng klase natin, yung successful students who took up the statistics and probability subject is 70%, siya po yung tinatawag nating success which is denoted by P. At ilan naman po ngayon kung 70% po yung nag-succeed sa pag-take ng statistics and probability, ano naman po ngayon yung nag-fail. Ilan naman pong percent yung nag-fail sa loob ng class? And that is 30%. So dito po sa binomial, binomial experiment, kailangan po mag-lead po sila sa 100%. So 70% plus 30%, that is 100%. P is the success and Q is the failure rate. So that is binomial experiment. Yung pangalawa po nating assumption, kailangan daw po NP must be greater than or equal to 5 and NQ must also be greater than or equal to 5. So kapag sinabi natin N, this is the number of samples. So in this problem po, sabi to 500 students who are taking the statistics and probability, ibig sabihin po, yung number of samples natin is 500. So we have here 500 times what is RP? RP is 70%. And in decimal, 70% is equal to 0 0.70. Must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, let's use our calculator. So, we have here 500 times 0 0.70 is equal to 350. So, ngayon po, 350 must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, is 350 greater than 5? Yes, it is. 350 is greater than 5. So, meaning to say, nag-adhere siya dito sa second natin na NP must be greater than or equal to 5. So, dito naman po tayo kay NQ. So, again, RN is 500 and our failure rate is 0 0.30. Must be greater than or equal to 5. So, 500 times 0 0.30 That is 150. So, ibig sabihin po dito, meron tayong 150 must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, is 150 greater than 5? Yes, it is. 
So, ibig sabihin po, na-meet din po natin. Ngayon po, my dear students, kapag ito pong dalawa, ito pong dalawang to, ito po yung tinatawag nating assumptions. Kapag na-meet po itong dalawang assumption, ibig sabihin po, nag adhere itong problem na ito sa central limit theorem. And thus, after nating malaman na itong assumptions na dalawang ito ay na-meet na, ibig sabihin, we will proceed now to the four-step solution of hypothesis testing. So now, let's move to our step number one. So step number one po natin, katulad lang naman po, nung ginagawa natin sa population mean, kailangan din po natin na gumawa ng HO or HA. Ngayon, sabi nga po natin, dahil po masyadong mahaba yung pagsusulat natin ng null and alternative, we will use the um, symbolic notation in this um process. Dito lang po sa part na to of symbolic notation. However, in step number 4, kailangan po na sa worded form pa rin po si um, alternative or null natin. Depende kung sino po yung inaccept. So now, sabi po dito, people believes that 70% of the students found that the topic hypothesis testing is quite difficult. A student wants to test if this is true by conducting a survey to 500 students taking the statistics and probability with hypothesis testing as their topic and found that 77% of them agrees. Run a hypothesis test at the level of significance of 0 0.05. Ngayon po, my dear students, unlike po kay population mean last time na ang hinahanap po natin is average or the word mean para magawa natin si hypothesis, dito po ang titignan natin is yung may mga percent po. And we will use, instead of mu, dito po sa population proportion, we will use P. So ngayon po, my dear students, ito po, pag sinabi natin proportion, ang titignan po natin yung may mga percent. So meron po tayong dalawang percent dito. This is the 70% and this is the 77%. Ngayon po, ano na, alin po kaya dito sa dalawang to ang gagamitin natin? Take note na ang hypothesis po is claim about the population parameter. At dito po sa dalawang to, alin po kaya dito sa dalawang to ang nagre-refer sa population? Is it the 70% or 77%? So kung makikita niyo po dito sa 70%, um, actually, ito pong proportion na to is galing po doon sa kalahatang um, tao dito po sa people na to. Pero sa 77%, saan po siya galing? So, if you will read again the problem, sabi dito, galing po si 77% sa 500 na students. Kasi daw po, out of 500 students, 77 daw po doon, or 77% daw po ng 500 doon ang nag agree na mahirap daw po yung hypothesis testing na topic. So, ibig sabihin, Ang gagamitin po natin dito ay hindi si 77, kundi si 70. So, ilagay po natin dito 0 0.70, 0 0.70. Ngayon po, my dear students, ano po kayang symbol ang gagamitin natin? So, tang tanungin po natin sa sarili natin kung meron po tayo nakikitang greater than or less than or any words na kaparehas po yung sinasabi. So, di ba po wala? So, ang isa lang kung ibig sabihin yan. Ibig sabihin po, ang gagamitin po natin is the equal and unequal sign. So, remember po yung table natin no, doon sa first video, gagamitin pa rin po natin siya ngayon. Now, let's move to our second step. So, step number two naman po, kailangan na natin ngayon gamitin ang ating formula. At unlike po doon sa formula ng population mean, wherein we use the Z is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean all over the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N, dito po my dear students, ang gagamitin na po natin is iba. And that is Z is equal to the P hat or the um, sample proportion minus the population proportion all over the square root of PQ over N. So our sample mean will be 0 0.77. And ano naman daw po yung population or the proportion taken from the population that is 0 0.70 divided by the square root of what is RP again? RP po is 
Dito po makikita sa binomial experiment that is 0.70. And what is RQ po? RQ is 0.30. So 30% po in decimal that is 0.30. And what is RN? Ilan po yung ginamit natin na sample that is 500. So now let's use the calculator to solve this one. So, 0 0.77 minus 0 0.70, that is 0 0.07 divided by the square root of what is the product of 0 0.70 times 0 0.30, that is 0 0.21. So, 0 0.21 over 500. So, rewrite lang po natin. So, that is 0 0.07 divided by the square root of 0 0.00042. So, first, let's get the square root of it. So, square root of the answer is equal to 0 0.02. So, i-approximate lang po natin. Halimbawa, 0 0.02 na siya. So, that is equal to 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.02. And our answer will be 3.5. So approximately, our value of Z or the Z computed is 3.5. Now let's move to our step number three. And for our step number three, we need to find the critical value. At makikita lang po natin or mahahanap natin ang critical value with the use of our level of significance, which is in this problem is 0 0.05 and the tail of the test. So yung tail of the test po, makikita po siya sa ating alternative hypothesis. So dito po, that is inequality symbol. At kapag inequality symbol po, that is two-tailed. So remember po, kapag inequality, two-tailed. Kapag greater than symbol po, yung HA, that is right-tailed. Pag less than symbol naman po, si HA, that is left-tailed. So ito po, inequality symbol. So this is two-tailed. Now considering po this um, data, Tignan na po natin kung ano po yung intersection niya. So that is total daw po and that is 0 0.05. So basically, it is positive negative 1.96. So our value po of our critical value. So the critical value now is positive negative 1.96. So let's now draw the normal curve. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's first trace per 1.96 slide. So, dito po siya. So, in the negative side naman, kasi nga po that is 2 tail, dito naman po siya makikita. So, ngayon, let's try to shade it. Ngayon po, my dear students, ito na po yung tinatawag nating rejection region, ang mga shaded area. Ngayon, itrace po natin kung saan si 3.5. So, si 3.5 po, nandito po siya nakalay. So, since dyan po nakalay si 3.5, ano na po ngayon ang decision natin? Is it to reject the null hypothesis or to accept the null hypothesis? So basically, we need to reject the null hypothesis kasi nga po nasa rejection region si 3.5 which is our Z value. So ibig sabihin po, our decision now is to reject the null hypothesis. So for our step number 4, we need to decide now. So ang decision po natin is to reject HO. At kapag ni-reject po natin yung HO, ano po yung i-accept natin? The HA. So now, our conclusion is the 
evidence is enough to show that the proportion of the students who found the topic hypothesis testing is quite difficult. Yes, zero point seven. So that is our decision now. So lahat na po ng steps na kuha natin. So therefore, this problem is solved. Now, if you still have questions, my dear students, you can always comment your questions on the comment section or you can send me a personal message for that matter, okay? So now, let's have another example. So for example, the National Sleep Foundation and the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and Sleep Research Society guidelines recommend 7 to 9 hours of sleep for young adults. However, at least 60% of the college students have poor quality sleep and garner an average of 7 hours of sleep per night with a standard deviation of 5. A researcher thus disclaimed by conducting his study to 50 50 individuals in a certain college and found that 67% of them are sleep deprived. At the level of significance of 0 0.05, is the claim valid? So it's your turn, my dear students. If you want to answer this question, you can always pause this problem and solve it on your own. So if you already did that, let's try to solve this collaboratively. So now, first things first, we need to solve for our assumption. So our assumption again is, or our assumption again is two. So we have here number one, the binomial experiment, which are denoted by P and Q. So ano po kaya dito yung P natin? What is our population proportion? So that is 60. Kasi po, kabuuan po siyang college students. 67, saan po siya galing? 550 students lang po. Kaya hindi po siya yung pipiliin natin. Ang pipiliin po natin si 60%. So that is 60%. What is our Q now? If this is 60, paano po magkakaroon tayo ng 100%? 100 minus 60, that is 40. Kaya ibig sabihin, this is 40%. Now, meron na tayong P and Q. We need to solve for NP must be greater than or equal to 5 and NQ must be greater than or equal to 5 also. So what is our N now, my dear students? So that is 50 times what is our P? That is 0 0.60 because 60% 60 in decimal, that is 0 0.60, must be greater than or equal to 5. Now let's compute. So 50 times 0 0.60, that is 30. 30 must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, is 30 po greater than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So, therefore, so, ibig sabihin na meet po natin si NP must be greater than or equal to 5. However, meron pa po tayong isa. NQ must also be greater than or equal to 5. So, again, RN is 50 times what is RQ? That is 0 0.40. Must be greater than or equal to 5. So, let's use the calculator. 50 times 0 0.40. That is 20. So 20 po must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, is 20 greater than or equal to 5? Yes, 20 is greater than 5. So ibig sabihin na meet din po natin si NQ. At ang sabi po natin, kapag ito pong dalawang to ay na meet natin, ibig sabihin ang problem po natin nag adhere sa central limit theorem. So therefore, we need to proceed now to our four-step solution for hypothesis testing. Now, let's try to have our null and alternative hypothesis for step number one. So for our step number one, we have P here for HO and HA. So, meron po tayo ditong indicator na at least. At kapag sinabi natin at least, ibig sabihin meron po tayong tinatawag na boundary. Pero yung boundary na yun is may itataas pa. 
So, ibig sabihin, at least 60%. Si 60% is siya na po yung pinaka-minimum. Meron pa pong itataas kay 60%. So, ibig sabihin, that is greater than or equal to 0.60. At ang kabaliktaran po ng greater than or equal, that is less than 0.60. Kung matatandaan nyo po, ito pong dalawang simbol na po ay available po sa ating video number 1. So now, tapos na po tayo sa step number 1. Let's now proceed to our step number 2. Under step number 2, we need to solve for the value of our z. So we have here z is equal to p hat minus p all over the square root of pq all over n. So, what is our sample proportion? That is 0.67 minus what is our P population proportion? That is 0.60 divided by the square root of what is our P again? Our P is 0.60 and our Q is 0.40. Ito pong dalawang to makikita dito po sa binomial experiment natin. Divided by ilan po yung ginamit na sample? That is 50. Dito po natin makikita si 50. 50 individuals po yung ginamit. So now let's calculate. 0.67 minus 60, that is 0.07. Again, divided by the square root of 0.60 minus times 0.40, that is equal to 0.24 divided by 50. So 0.24 divided by 50, that is approximately 0.0048. So that is equal to 0.07 divided by 0 or the square root of 0.0048. So kung makikita niyo po my dear students, ito negative po kasi siya. At in decimal, ito po kasi nasa, ano siya, nasa scientific notation po ang tawag dito. At in decimal po, para po natin malaman kung ilan po ang decimal places niya. Kapag negative po, ibig sabihin po niyan, yung movement po is to the right. Ay, kapag negative po, ang movement po ng decimal natin is to the left. Kapag positive po, to the right. So kung ito po, makikita nyo, this is negative sa calculator natin. Ibig sabihin, tatlong beses din po to the left yung movement natin. So that is 1, 2, 3. Kaya po, 0, 0, 0. Kaya magiging 0.0048 po siya. Opo, in decimal. So actually, the same lang po ang 0.0048 sa 4.8 times 10 raised to negative 3. Ito po kasi nasa decimal notation. Ito po nasa scientific notation. So I hope that is already clear to you. Now let's get the square root of 4.8. So, the square root of the answer, para madali po tayo, that's approximately 0.07. Approximately 0. Okay, let's change the color. 0.07 divided by 0.07. And approximately, that is 1. So, Z is equal to 1. Okay, for our step number three, we need to find the critical value and critical value is denoted or we can find the critical value with the use of our level of significance, which is 0.05. And of course, the tail of the test. So as you can see, the tail of the test is available in our alternative hypothesis and it is less than, less than. So ibig sabihin, that is left tailed. So left tailed. Po tayo, and that is 0.05. Now, let's check po for our table of critical values. So, again, that is one tail tail to the left, meaning to say negative po ang gagamitin natin. And that is 0.05. So, negative 1.645. So, our critical value now is negative 1.645. Now, in our um, normal curve, That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So, negative 1.645. So, approximately, nandito po siya. And let's shade that. And let's try to find where Z, which is equivalent to 1, lies. So, kung makikita niyo po, dito po si Z maglalay. So, ngayon po, my dear students, what should be our decision? So, kung makikita niyo po, wala po siya sa rejection region. So, ibig sabihin, nasa acceptance region siya. So, ibig sabihin po nito, we need to accept the null hypothesis. So, that will be our decision. So now, let's go to our step number four. So step number four, our decision to accept HO. Now for our conclusion, we can say that the evidence is enough to show that the proportion of the college students with or quality of sleep is what? Kapag in-accept uh, in natin si HO is, meron po tayo ditong equal sign. So, ibig sabihin, pwede natin sabihin na is 0 0.60. Pero since meron pa rin po tayong greater than symbol here, pwede natin sabihin na or more. So, that will be our decision. Accept the null hypothesis and our um, conclusion now is that the evidence is enough to show that the proportion of the college students with a poor quality, I'm so sorry, poor quality of sleep is 0 0.06 or more. So a study claims that 35% of the students are supporters of at least two Korean popular groups. Kim Nam Joon, a researcher, tested this claim and found out that 250 students in Seoul National University, 77 of them says that they support at least two K-pop groups. At the level of significance of 0 0.10, do we have enough evidence to say that the proportion of students who supported at least two K-pop groups are greater or is greater? So, actually, my dear students, di ba, part to ng quiz natin ng makaraan. However, I have noticed that a lot of you are confused. Opo, confused with what? Dito po sa nakalagay natin dito na at least. Opo. So, as you can see, ang pinetest po natin sa hypothesis testing na po is not actually the K-pop groups, the Korean popular groups, but actually the students who supported at least so, ibig sabihin, hindi po si K-pop groups yung tinatas natin but the proportion of the students. Kaya po, my dear students, yung karamihan ng mali sa atin is nag-focus kay po but not on the proportion which is 35%. So before we jump into this problem, let us first check for the assumption. So first po, let's have the binomial experiment. So number one, we need to have the P and the Q. Now our P po, nakalagay dito, our population proportion is 35%. And if this is 35%, well, what will be our Q? That is 65%. Because 35 plus 65, that is 100. Opo. So now... Our second assumption, so ito nakuha po natin si assumption number one, si assumption number two naman po tayo, which is NP must be greater than or equal to 5 and NQ must be greater than or equal to 5. So NP muna tayo, what is RN? RN is 250 students here. So 250 students, what is RP? That is 0 0.35, must be greater than or equal to 5. Now 250. times 0 0.35, that is 87.5. So we have here 87.5 must be greater than or equal to 5. Now as you can see, 87.5 is greater than 5. So technically, nakuha po natin si NP. Nag-agree po yung assumption natin dito po sa problem natin. So again, our N is equal to 250 
times what is our Q? That is 0 0.65. Must be greater than or equal to 5. Now let's compute for 250 times 0 0.65. That is equal to 162.5. So 162.5 must be greater than or equal to 5. Now, as you can see, 162.5 is indeed greater to 5. So ibig sabihin po, na-achieve na naman natin yung dalawang assumptions. At dahil na-achieve natin yung dalawang assumption, it is our indicator now to move to our hypothesis testing process. So step number one again, we need to formulate our null and alternative hypothesis. So that is P. So as you can see, ano po kaya dito yung nagsasabi na kailangan gawin natin yung alternative muna. So as you can see, dito po sa last part, greater, meron po tayo nakitang greater. Do we have enough evidence to say that the proportion of the students who supported at least two K-pop groups is greater? So that is, ibig sabihin, greater than 0 0.35 and here po, less than or equal to 0 0.35. So as you can see po, ito po yung tinutukoy kong mali doon sa ibang answers po. Bakit? Kasi po, nung nag tayo, yung iba pong answer is equal to at least so, when we say at least, diba, in symbol that is greater than or equal to 2, and P, ano daw po yung kabaliktaran nito? That is less than 2. So, as you can see, my dear students, ito po, ginagamit natin yan kung ang tinetest natin are the K-pop groups. Dito po, K-pop groups. Pero hindi po, ang tinetest po natin is not the K-pop groups, but actually the population or the proportion of the students who supported at least two K-pop groups, but not the K-pop groups themselves. Okay? So, ibig sabihin po, dito po sa step number one, ito po yung answer natin. So, I hope po, my dear students, this is um clear to you opo. Wag po mag-overthink, lalo na po sa exam. So now, let's move to our step number two. And we need to use Z is equal to the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by PQ over N. So, kung makikita nyo po, C, 35% lang po yung proportion natin dito. At kapag sinabi natin 35%, this is the population proportion. Kaya dito po siya ilalagay natin. So what will be our sample proportion? So sample proportion, the proportion taken from the sample. So meron po tayo dito ang sample na 250. Sa 250 daw po yun, ilan po yung support sa at least two K-pop groups? That is 77. So 77 divided by 250. That will give us 0 0.308. So, ibig sabihin 0 0.308 po yung gagamitin natin dito. Divided by what is our P? 0 0.35. What is our Q? 0 0.65. Divided by what is our N? 250. So, 0 0.308. Minus 0 0.35. So that will give us negative 0 0.042. So that will give us negative 0 0.042. Divided by the square root of what is the product of 0 0.35 times 0 0.65. That will give us 0 0.2275. Now, 0 0.2275 divided by, kasi meron po tayo ditong 250, 250, that will give us 0 0.1 times 10 raised to negative 4. So, in decimal po, my dear students, again, kailangan po natin, since negative siya, i-move po natin si decimal point to the left. So, that will give us, so dito po magmumula, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 0, 0, 0, so that will give us 0 0.00091. So ibig sabihin po the square root of 0 
So now let's get the square root of the answer. So that is 0 0.03 to get the square root of this one. Apo. So we have here 0 0.03 and negative 0 0.042. So now let's divide negative 0 0.042 divided by 0 0.03. That will give us negative 1.4. So our z value now, z is equal to negative 1.4. Let's go now to step number 3. So step number 3 po natin. We need to find the alpha and the tail of the test. What is the tail of the test here? The tail of the test is located po or is denoted by our um, alternative hypothesis. So that will give us, so right tailed po siya because we have the greater than symbol. So this is right tailed. And it is 0 0.10. So hanapin lang po natin yung intersection na yan sa ating Z table. So we have here one tailed. So positive po ang kukunin natin. And that is 0 0.10, So our critical value po is equal to positive 1.28. So now let's do our normal curve. So positive 1.28, dito po siya makikita. You can see the z negative 1.4 dito po siya makikita. So saan po uli siyang region? Is it the acceptance region or the rejection region? So as you can see po, ito po ay nasa acceptance region. So therefore po, we need to accept the null hypothesis. And if we accept the null hypothesis, ano na po ngayon yung magiging um, conclusion natin? So the first step for our decision is to accept again HO. For our conclusion, we can say that the evidence is enough to show that the proportion of the students supported at least three pop groups is zero point thirty five. Kasi nga po sa accept natin na pag accept natin ng null hypothesis, we have here equal sign, so that is zero point thirty five or so tatandaan po meron pa pong kapartners equal sign, which is the less than symbol, so that is or less. Lesser. Pwede natin sabihin, or lesser. Now, for our last example po, I want you to answer this one on your own and try to figure out on what particular step or steps you still find the hypothesis testing difficult, okay? And please let me know if you still have questions. Please reach me on my Messenger account. You can always find me there. And also, you can leave your comments down below. That's it for today, my dear students. If you still have questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye!